This is definitely not like a local shaka. We can be kind of segregated. We're not gonna go there. We'll make that the last one. Okay guys, we're gonna jump straight into it. Derek Ogashi with Mahe. We're Cork Team Hawaii, and we're gonna talk about things that no one else is gonna tell you about Hawaii. Something they may not tell you about moving to Hawaii. There are portions of our island where the water may or may not be contaminated from military underground fuel tanks. There's this whole thing in the news. It's spawning Hawaiian activism and just, it doesn't have to be Hawaiian, just human activism. My friends live in this military housing, AMR. We showed it in our first PCS video, right? We showed AMR, you know, a bunch of, tons of military houses, a very nice living option for our active duty members. They literally can't use their water. They can't shower, they can't brush their teeth, they can't cook with it. To what extent the problem has been mitigated and flushed out at this point, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on it. However, um, there have been reports of kids with rashes, people going to the hospital after becoming sick to their stomach, kids, adults experiencing GI problems, the smell of fuel, whether it be JP5 or JP7 or whatever, in the wa in the water at AMR and the surrounding areas. My wife was just at uh, the Navy Exchange yesterday. She was going to use the computer. All of the restaurants are closed because I guess the proximity to this issue, like their water is non-potable and non-usable. It's affecting local like communities as well, yeah, right? So it's not you, just a base, right? No, no, no. National news at this point. If you right. look online, topographical maps and you know color coordinated charts of all the different areas that are affected by these main aquifers that are contaminated, and it's like a large portion of like town side and not a new issue just in the forefront now that's another thing that i'll tell you about hawaii that there's just a lot of things that does, a lot of things that don't get talked about that doesn't make the news that we don't see a lot of but you'll feel and hear about and experience when you're here as far as maybe a little bit of civil unrest maybe yeah. um, a little bit of a dichotomy of a, a heavily militarized part of the United States. This is, you know, we have like every type of base here, every every branch of military here, heavily militarized, but also just a lot of, of unrest with um, Hawaiians or uh, people who, you know, have adopted the Hawaiian lifestyle, people who are Kamaina and have lived here forever. And Rara is would say Hawaiians are Hawaiians at heart, right? Yeah, Hawaiians yeah. at heart. Yeah, and yeah. it's very much so like a military hub, but also when you come and you experience and you kind of get more immersed in daily life, you will see that there is a lot of protest. There is a lot of um, unrest. This like Red Hill, this, this water, scenario I want to like tread lightly on how I talk about it but it's kind of cool in such a way that like all of the families are being affected by it it's not just Hawaiians that are being affected negatively by it it's it's the the military families too to be clear we're not happy no, 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 no. that military families are affected no, there's activism a there's a unification yeah. of, of activism and kind of like a how do we make this situation right because it's not good for anybody so in this protest you see everyone from all walks of life in the forefront because this is an issue that everybody understands everybody understands that we need clean water everybody understands that we can't have fuel in our water but an interesting thing about it is it it brings up other other areas of unrest, other ideologies that not everybody can relate to, not everybody knows about, not everybody understands. For instance, um, the Mauna, Kukia Imona, that movement, which some of you know because of The Rock and Jason Momoa, or you know, because it, it got its 15 minutes and was like very much so out there and everybody saw, but that wasn't like a new thing. What she's referring to is they wanted to build a new 30 meter telescope on the top of Mauna Kea, a sacred place for Hawaiians and Hawaiian culture. Not just Hawaiian, but like the indigenous cultures across the world came together to support blocking the building of this telescope. You know, to be fair too, even though we're like proudly Hawaiian and what, we've had our, you and I have had our talks of how it's more nuanced than to just say no. Like we Hawaiians were some of the most skilled navigators in the world. Navigators, wayfinders, celestial. Astronomy, you know, like, before it was astronomy. And so whereas we could be proud of Hawaii supporting that movement, the approach has been irresponsible and they haven't deconstructed other telescopes that are not in use. There's been large amounts of trash left up there. And it's really not even an anti-anything. If it's anti-anything, it's anti-desecration. I personally want to make sure that that's something I touch on because Hawaiian activism consistently gets painted in an anti, anti, anti light. Um, activism is not being, anti it's not about necessarily being anti anything, it's about being pro something. 
Like there's a world that I can exist in where I'm not anti-science, I'm not anti-telescope, I'm pro-indigenous, I'm pro-Hawaiian, I'm pro, you know, respect and doing things in a pono and righteous way. The main point, like, it's we're pro-respect, like yeah. pro-respect to the land and, mm -hmm. and back to the, the video things they're not going to tell you is, you know, like when I was in California, you hear of the Sierra Club and they like protect the land and they wanted to block Disney from building in the Sierra Nevadas and that's in everyone here, you know, like, I should say everyone, you'll, you'll find litter and you'll find things, but there's very much a like protect the land, protect the oceans, as it should be, right? Mm -hmm. Living in this tropical paradise in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you'll get caught out quick if you don't respect the land. And someone sees you disrespecting the land by, you know, pouring something into a storm drain or whatever. Everything we do because we're such a small island ecosystem, we visibly see how it affects us yeah. so it makes us more prone to be more careful and to be more cognizant and mindful of like respecting this place that we live in because it's small and it's delicate and it's a fragile ecosystem and if we don't then we're the ones who suffer Hawaii is not a place where you're gonna honk your horn hurry up it's the oh, light turn green no, no, no. we don't or, we don't honk in Hawaii unless right. it's that's super disrespectful you can honk to be like hey what's up there's an art to the like <laughs> Just letting you know. I know yeah. you're checking your phone. Yeah, I, that's, I check my phone too, but just, can we hear? Okay, thank Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we don't lay on the horn. No, no. Like, you, you don't want to be that guy. It's not a communication guy. device. Like no, the no, no, no. No, we don't use it for that. Culturally on the mainland, it's kind of like lit more litigious, right? It's like, I'm in my vehicle and my boundaries and I honked at you <laughs> and so what? You can't do anything. Whereas in Hawaii, it's like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pull oh. over. We really don't got sports like the mainland. Another thing is, if you want to watch sports here, a 9 a.m., 10 a.m. game on the East Coast, mm -hmm. it's 5, 6 a.m., you know, whatever. Actually, no. It's like, like 3 a.m. 3, 4 a.m. Uh, unless you're really into MMA because Hawaii is all about that. We're a fighting <laughs> culture. So one thing, we are here just, just <laughs> hanging out. We have a small window in between some things. You may or may not see a beer or something. Definitely uh, going to see a couple chicken wings. They don't tell you about, it, it's harder to get fresh food here. Then like your brothers live in California. Yeah, we're every and corner we store is kale. Any block and it's like, and because of that, we don't have like a bunch of like nice, like cool fresh spots for like salads and bowls and juices. In and town, we're like starting that. to not really just come like up. a couple things. Moku. But it's not thank like you. thank you. See, look this whole look how much fresh food we got here. We got a celery and two carrots. That's that's. I'm just gonna eat the carrot. That's which it. is crazy because like agriculturally, like we should because it's Hawaii, everything grows here. Like we fly in all the avocados, we fly in all the fruits, whatever. But we also have just a lot of avocados from Mexico. Fresh fish, you're gonna have more of here. One of the things they don't tell you about Hawaii is that we're very, very, very reliant on the supply chain and shipping. If ever there was a natural disaster or catastrophe where the supply chain were interrupted, mm -hmm. might be kind of kind of screwed Even here. Even the beginning of pandemic, like everybody freaks out and like, Costco will be slammed everywhere. We know that our structure is built in such a way that if we can't get stuff in on Matson, we don't have stuff. And on that same note, because everything ships to us, everything takes a long time to get here. Everything is a little bit pricier because you're paying for that premium of having to ship everything here. So when you talk about, oh, the cost of living is so expensive here. I mean, yeah, if you live on a literal rock in the middle of the literal ocean, <laughs> Yeah. Like it costs a little bit more to get stuff yeah. here. This one you may know if you're already a fan of this channel and you've been thinking about moving to Hawaii, but they might not tell you how expensive housing is here. I would think that everyone would know that, but you know, we have we have buyers right now. You know, they're military PCSing here. They are homeowners. They prefer to own. She's even a real estate agent. And we really dialed things in and they saw what it would cost to get what they wanted, what they could afford, got them they just tapped out of the housing market and they're gonna stay in base housing. I mean, if you're coming from like San Francisco or you know, right. New York or something, the price is, a sh it's not like a sticker shock. Every property here is on prime real estate. We're never gonna be able to expand bigger than the size of this island. Yeah. It is an island. It is what it is. Another thing they don't tell you is that we have some of the lowest rated schools. It's special growing up in Hawaii and we don't think that school ratings tell the whole picture. Vermont, Delaware, Connecticut, New York, like, we're not those states. We value our keiki, we value our children in a different way. So yeah. maybe we don't have the best school ratings, maybe we don't have the best test scores, but you will not find another place where pretty much every month your kid has an event at school that you are invited to where we celebrate them, where we, we do a performance, where we do a hula, where they get dressed up and they have lays and we clap and we praise and we really take care of them. 
So it's just maybe a little bit of a different mindset on the things that are valued or seen as valuable. To me as a mother, I don't think I, I couldn't raise my kids anywhere else because I just don't, you don't have that community. We as a village take care of and love our kids the way that we do here. I moved home in time for my oldest to start kindergarten. So. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an For idea. For instance, May Day in Hawaii. Lei Day, big celebration here. We make the leis, we make the costumes for our kids. They All year they practice for this. Music and poetry and the arts are really big in Hawaii. Whereas in other places, it's not that big a deal. Here, like almost every school program is going to have, or every school is going to have like a music program here. And they're going to put on a show. May Day is kind of like the big celebration to the culmination of all of the song and dance that they do. And they get all dressed up and it's like K through six. The elementary school is huge in elementary. They pick a different princess and prince for every different island. And they walk in and there's a, a court. Were you? Uh... I was. Yes, I was. But you know what? I got chicken pox the day before I was supposed to be the May Day queen. Oh, okay. And I didn't get to go. I was... So instead I had socks duct taped to my hands so that I couldn't scratch my face. Oh, and I was COVID. like COVID dancing, I was like dancing hula at home, all sad. I think I was the king of Molokai or something. My dad probably has video of my whole uh, from, well, everybody, Campbell, from Campbell. Everybody has video and this is the stuff that you like watch forever with your family. I mean, I got videos of my kids and it's just, oh man, you can just hear me like scream laughing and like so proud in the background. It's just. Did you pure? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pure is a Hawaiian word for prayer, so. Mm -hmm. At these, at these things, people will come up and, and give the prayer in Hawaiian. Hawaiian culture, it's all, it's, we're all very sing-songy. The language is super sing-songy. Sing everything. Sing-songy? Sing Ho'o -oh lau lea. Like everything just sounds really like the inflection Ho -ho. is very up and down. And you know, once we brought literacy to Hawaii, we became extremely literate. But before that, everything was passed down orally um, via song and our traditions were passed down like an entire genealogy the creation of like earth mother and like sky father that all the way down to like the per the first human on earth was passed down orally via oli or chant so mm -hmm. that is why the language sounds the way it does that is why we're like genetically predispositioned to just be a little bit like performance based we like to sing we like to dance we like to kani kapila um, that's another thing they don't tell you about Hawaii. Every family in Hawaii has a super talented brother or sister that can like rip on the ukulele. They, they bring the ukulele oh, yeah. to all the parties, it's, right? It's very uncommon to not have a kani kapila session or a singing, everybody jam, like a jam session at a local party. If you're going to a barbecue or something like that with your friends, like it's more uncommon that you don't all end up singing. One of the things about our culture that they may not tell you is that it can be seen as rude mm. to not bring something to yeah. an event if you're invited to an event and they say oh we don't need anything they're it's lying a lie. it's a lie right? <laughs> you better bring something they may or may not need it but it would be rude if you didn't bring something yeah. because then everyone's gonna be able to take stuff home yeah so if you're gonna afford much then you don't have to bring much but at least bring something and contribute right mm -hmm. just don't come empty-handed don't you don't come empty-handed mm -hmm. at parties every party is a potluck you can just assume that you should bring something you also got to say bye to like every person something yeah. they don't tell you about hawaii and how we act around each other. Anybody who's old enough to be your dad or your uncle or your auntie, if they're local, you better call them auntie or you better call them uncle. I know on the mainland, like my friends would be like, hey, Larry, to my dad. And he's just like, oh, no, no, no. It's like disrespectful. Culturally for us here, no, I cannot even like imagine calling like a friend's mom like by their first name. Like my mom would have like killed me. It would have been like the end of me if I did that. Where my dad used to work, Everyone called him Harry O, Harry O, Harry Okahashi, right? When I came to his job for the first time in Hawaii, I wasn't even living here yet. I was like 11 or 12. And I went, Harry O, Uncle Jackie from Papa Korea. Uncle Jackie was like, boy, he like pulled me on side. Don't you ever call your dad by his name. The main point of these different smaller points is that it's a culture that's heavily rooted in respect and you need to tread lightly. One of the things they don't tell you about Hawaii is it can be hard to assimilate. It can be hard to fit in. It can be hard to be to get accepted into our culture. There's a lot of nuances that are derived from Japanese culture, especially I think one of the heaviest influences. Mm -hmm. But Chinese, Portuguese, Korean, Filipino, Puerto Rican, like all of the cultures that were part of our plantation days. There's this cultural mix. And if you don't take your time to learn it, mm -hmm. 
you can maybe experience some tension sometimes, right? Yeah. It took so many years just for our culture to become what it is. Mm -hmm. that you're not gonna learn it like right away. You know, just be open to things being a little bit weird. The way people speak to each other, the way, the things people call each other, the tone of voice, even just that, you know, when you go to the mainland and you walk around and you see people, you know, they do this, they put their head down, they go, hey, how's it? Or here, but they go, we go like this, we put our head up, like just little, like little weird differences here yeah. that you'll notice. Yeah, yeah. That like, that will like be the thing that points out to the other person that you're not from here. Make sure your shaka is this way, turn it around. I mean, I do a lot of forward facing shakas like to be ironic, but like this is definitely not like a local shaka. You gotta like loosen it up and turn it around. I think when the elbow's down, it's not mm. local. If, if you but do, if the if arms you're driving, extended. Yeah, 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 yeah. If your arm's straight, you can forward face. <laughs> but otherwise, if you bent, you gotta backwards. Forward facing is most appropriate when people far away, yeah. You gotta oh. reach them, yeah. Because yeah, you gotta. Like, Something they don't tell you about moving to Hawaii is that also that we're very welcoming. We're contradicting ourselves, right? We, we're saying that it's hard to assimilate and you might experience tension and cultural trauma, generational trauma, and all those things are true. But at the same time, we're extremely welcoming. The key factor there is we're harder, we have a harder shell, like in general as a culture, to break through because of the, just the years of different types of generational trauma, cultural trauma, you know, all those things here. But once we know, that you know where it's, your heart is yeah where your heart is that it's a safe space that you're respectful super welcoming i would say it's like a hard shell with a soft thin coating because superficially hawaii's like oh yeah no it's okay okay no there you go and then then if you don't reciprocate uh -huh. then you feel the hard shell this place is a huge melting pot and there is nobody that i know from here who is not like five six seven different cultures put together we have no right to be like oh my gosh that other he's not from here blah blah, blah. like none of us are like we're all from yeah. everywhere they use chopsticks everywhere if you're not from here and you don't know you don't know how to speak pigeon you may not be able to understand people. Like my uncle from Kauai, I guarantee you at least half the people watching can't understand Uncle Ricky. He says things that we don't even like, yeah. we don't say, you know? Like, also like different islands have different types of pigeon. You know, like a New York accent is like a New York accent. You know, you what are you doing? Go, uh, it's horrible, I'm sorry, New York. That was really bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, New York, I can't do it. That's like when people try to speak pigeon when they come here and it's it Jamaican is. every time. Like, hey, man. Like, oh gosh. Oh, hey, bruh. <laughs> if you guys want, <laughs> we'll do a pigeon video. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know what kind of things you'd like to see translated into pigeon. Can you translate into pigeon? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, how would they wouldn't know how to say it, right? So I guess so. Therefore, we translate. One of the things they don't tell you about Hawaii is they serve rice everywhere. I've heard like military people whatever say like I'm, I get tired of rice. Like kind of, mm -hmm. like you can't really find mashed potatoes. No. Unless KFC. you're like at a steakhouse or something. My dad eats r spaghetti and rice. <gasps> that's a new one. Bro, my dad puts rice in like corn chowder and clam chowder. I'm like... I feel like that's appropriate. Is it? That's always a safe thing to bring to a potluck, by oh, the way, rice. Or you don't want to be that guy that brought just the rice. Why? Did you know that cost that you? That guy's the MVP sometimes. Like, yeah. That's another thing. Perfect rice in Hawaii. No matter how long your finger is or where your line falls on your finger, this finger, this line right here, put the water up to that line and that's how you make perfect rice in Hawaii. Gotta be a little bit sticky. If your rice doesn't touch each other on the plate, then you made it wrong. Something they may not tell you about, people may not tell you about moving to Hawaii or living in Hawaii is there's a very visible amount of displaced people. I said it on this channel before, but oftentimes we'll say, uh, people will say I'm houseless, I'm not homeless because Hawaii is my home. I don't know if Bula Ia is the only one who said that. It's definitely noticeable. In our y and I video, there was a guy pushing a cart. I, I can't confirm if he was houseless or not. He was like pushing a cart and kind of in our way or something. He's like, yeah. oftentimes I'll see a homeless person, you know, crossing the street or whatever, and I'll be like, go, go, go. And they're like, thank you, you know. Like, Still like the underlying aloha spirit, just genuinely yeah. happy to be alive in here. But aesthetically, you know, the community and certain parts of downtown, certain beaches, you know, beaches on the west side, beaches even in town. Barbers, Eva Beach, Kapolei area, you can find places like, you know, like Pahu. I take my son to go boxing in this area. There's a whole homeless community in these woods. It's a unique culture that people don't want to leave. They don't want to leave this island, leave their family. It's a big migration to leave should you decide to, but then it's extremely expensive to live here compared to most places. So one of the things they don't tell you about Hawaii is there's military everywhere. That's more true on this island on Oahu. It can be true in other places as well. And military spending heavily affects our economy. After tourism, yeah. the military is the, you know, Pearl Harbor Hickam is the biggest employer 
on the whole island. So Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. There's a ton of military. And when, and when you go to certain places, nothing but buzz cuts and uniforms and... Like Wahiwa. Every barbershop there has like one haircut that they do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's one. <laughs> so one of the things they don't tell you about Hawaii is that our islands vary. They, they vary a lot. Maybe not to the outside eye, but like for example here on Oahu, you can find yourself in dense, dense city. Concrete buildings with no view of a mountain, an ocean. Something that doesn't look like Hawaii as you would envision it at all. You could also find yourself in suburbia. To us, we understand Hawaii construction and the kind of streets and the red dirt staining the walls and the, the lava rock walls. But outside of that, certain places in Mililani or like Eva Kapolei, they barely resemble Hawaii as you would think of Hawaii. On Oahu, you could also get out into the country and see like real Hawaii. Or you go to another island like Kauai, where it's hard to find anything that resembles the Hawaii suburb, or the, sorry, the Oahu suburbs, the Oahu cities, right? Place like Maui, where it's everything from really country to like really, really resorty, right? Super five-star. Very like. four seasons here. <laughs> Shout out to Big Island too, we didn't forget you guys. Things they don't tell you, none of the beaches in Hawaii are private. You're watching a movie and you're seeing and your expectation is just like nice white sandy clear nobody there beach especially on oahu that's not really a thing. but if you're buying your eight million dollar 20 million dollar estate yeah. understand that you don't own yeah the the water line yeah. you know so that's not private you know sand is public land sand is public land yeah. another thing they may not tell you about hawaii on the financial side is we have become the worst state in the whole country even worse than california for high income earners so just last year, they passed their tax revision. And basically, if you make over $250,000 here, you pay more in taxes, not property taxes, but income and you know payroll taxes than anywhere, anywhere else in the country. Another thing they don't tell you about Hawaii is that we can be kind of segregated. At times there are certain communities historically you know known for being a plantation community 100 years ago when the plantations were active mm -hmm. it was a dense population of people from one foreign land right yeah. and Think each different area they were they were segregated each plantation worker had like a village that was like japan village and or Filipino. Filipino village and, you know, yeah. whatever. Portuguese, Chinese, whatever. Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. And so still today in our culture, you have communities on the different islands and definitely on this island that they're predominantly a certain, you know, demographic and ethnicity. It's like the grandkids of the plantation workers, right? Who are inevitably all of a certain, you know, ethnicity, whatever. And then it trickles down. So everybody who lived in that area at one point was that specific ethnicity. So like on Molokai, where I lived for a while, there's like an area where they're just like, oh, that's Manila camp, Filipino camp. That's what the place is no, called. No, in Aiea, they call, I think if you look on the maps, it says Filipino, you know Filipino camp? Aiea. There's one in Wailua. They like, all have those and that's because that's originally during plantation time, that's where that certain ethnicity lived because right, they right. kept everybody separate. It's not being derogatory. That's just what it We're is. We're not now. steering. Let me be very clear. <laughs> if you look up the definition of steering, uh, to summarize, it says, it basically says that we're trying to influence people to live or to not live, you know, to be allowed to buy or not to be allowed to buy based off of demographics, religion, race, gender. That's not what we're doing. We're just describing culturally the, cultural the makeup of Hawaii. Yeah, the and influences the, that exist. There's a Chinatown, you know, in most mm -hmm. cities, right? Yeah. There's a China, and we're no exception. It's not a bad thing here, too. That's the thing. So when I worked in California, I would tell people about like our Frank De Lima Christmas song, the Mr. Sancho Lee song. Oh, yeah. And I remember more woke people would be offended. So there's this song, it goes through the different cultures and it teases them. So Mr. Sancho Lee, uh, Mr. Concepcion, which is referring to a Filipino old man. Kamaka Viva Ole. Mr. Kamaka Viva Ole, referring to a Hawaiian man. What's the Japanese one? Mr. Asu Tanaka or Tanaka. something, yeah? I think it's something, yeah, Mr. Tanaka, the <laughs> Japanese man. Yeah. But anyways, it's just kind of like a lighthearted, poke fun song. At any barbecue get together with all of these different cultures present, they would play it and everyone kind of laugh and drink and no big deal here, yeah. right? Especially because pretty much everybody is like all of those things. You, you the, A human being might be every one of those yeah. ethnicities. I am like right? all of those things, yeah. you know what I mean? When I would explain it to these kind of more woke people in California, I'm saying being woke is necessary, you know, we'll, that's a different video. I need to be way more focused to walk that fine line. At Stanford in California, they're like, that is, that is wrong. But in Hawaii, it's, it's accepted, it's okay. 
that's wrong. We're different. You know, just <laughs> let's just leave it at that. We're, We're different. different. We're built different. <laughs> We're built different. We're built different. You know. <laughs> One thing they don't tell you, or maybe they don't point out, because it's kind of obvious. People are wearing less clothes here. Oh yeah. Guys in long jugs, no shirt on. Girls in <laughs> long jugs, bikini top. You're like, whoa. Got like it? a pareo on or something. Sometimes not, you yeah. know, like, mm -hmm. I think North Shore food line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different thing. Like You can be barefoot pretty much anywhere here. The yeah. no shirt, no shoes thing is not really a thing here. You never want to eat the last of whatever there is. So if you look at our plate here, there's exactly one piece of everything left. I'm eating this one. <laughs> and if you do eat the last one, oh, trust me, somebody's going to be talking about it. And it's always like my friend from the mainland who like, well, just like, duh, it's there. Like nobody's eating it. Like, obviously, why would you not eat it? I'm like, ah. I'm not a CPA or whatnot, but pensions are not taxed in Hawaii. So retirement. So if you're pulling out of your 401k and it's a, not a Roth, it's traditional, plan on that being taxed, etc. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Pensions, at least today, so I've heard, non-tax. We also have some of the lowest property tax in the country for owner occupants. So Hawaii could be one of the better places to retire. One thing they might not tell you about Hawaii is Hawaiian time. Oh yeah, speaking of Hawaiian time, People I are... am late to get my kids. So Hey guys, thank you for watching. I'm Derek Okahashi. And I'm Mahi Kahale with Core Team Hawaii. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We love hearing your feedback and all those likes and comments put gas on our tank. Make sure you check out our website. Be sure to fill out the contact form so we know how to reach you. Check out the website, contact forms right at the top. Look forward to connecting with you guys for all your Hawaii real estate and living needs. Alright guys, mahalo. <laughs>